come up to me at work and it's kind of like what Brother Yuri was talking about in the men's room. They'll kind of make light sometimes and they'll say, oh, are you a religious man, are you? I'm like, no, I ain't religious. I've got salvation. You know what religion is? It's man's pathetic way of trying to reach God. But you know what salvation is? It's God's perfect plan to reach man. Amen. I'm glad I got salvation, not religion tonight, ain't you? Religion won't do nothing for you. But salvation will get you to heaven. Amen. Make you that new creature. Amen. Make you have new habits, new want-tos. I know, I know what I'm talking about. Anybody got a song on your heart tonight? All right, come preach to us, Savior. Hey, I'm proud of these young preachers, amen, that we've got in this church. If I didn't have confidence that this young man wasn't living right and serving God, I wouldn't be behind this pulpit, all of them. I got confidence in them. Preach it. They're a help to the church. I thank the Lord for getting to be here tonight. I learned the more that I do this, the more that I turn into a big old crybaby. I turn into a big old cry baby because he's been good to me. 
I was telling Brother Andrew the other day, a lot of times I feel like I'm, I'm worthless because I look back at things that I've done in my life and a lot of times it's not things that I've done uh, outside of the will of God, but it's things that I've done on this side of Calvary. I'm not proud of. Uh, but I pray that the Lord would help me tonight. Uh, I've got a real simple thought. It's not going to be something very different. Uh, I, I don't know why the Lord's led me this direction, but I think He's led me this way for a reason. Uh, I trust in Him. I trust in Him tonight to give me exactly what it, uh, to, to deliver to, to y'all. Um, but a lot of times it's, it's a helping to me first. A lot of times what the Lord gives me is a helping to me first before it gets to y'all. Uh, so I pray that the Lord would help me tonight, uh, that I wouldn't do it in a, in a mean spirit, but I want to see somebody get help. I want to see our church grow. I want to see people get help in the community. That's what it's all about. It's about leading people to Christ. It's about showing people the love of Jesus and just how good He's been to us. If you want to turn in your Bibles, I'm going to read something first before you stand. But if you want to get your Bibles in the right spot, I'm going to be reading out of Philippians uh, chapter 1, and we're going to be starting in uh, verse 8. Uh, say amen when you got your places. You don't have to stand yet, because i got something else I want to read. I want you to think for just a second as I read this. This is going to be, uh, this, uh, typically, uh, somebody gets up to, to give a message. They would, uh, they would typically... Read the scripture first, but I had this, I had this, uh, this thought right here, and I want to read this first. And if the Lord would help me tonight, I want to try and, and present to you what God's given to me. You're locked up in a prison. You didn't do anything wrong. It's cold and it's dirty. The food, if you get anything at all, is rotten and wormy. It's dark. You ain't spoken to another person in days. The rats crawl all over you at night. Keeping you awake. If you got one chance to write a letter to somebody, what would you say? What would you say to those people? If you got a chance to write one letter to your family, what would you say to them? If you got a chance to write a letter to your wife, to your spouse, what would you say to them? Go to Philippians chapter 1 and verse 8. This is where I want to start tonight. Now this is Paul... And he says, For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. But I want you to catch this here. He says, I would you understand, brethren, that the things which happened to me have fallen out rather into the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all places, or in all the palace and in all other places. You may be seated. And I want to go back to, what, to, to the first thing that I read to you. It says you're locked up in a prison, but you didn't do anything wrong. Said it's cold and dirty, and the food, if you get anything, is rotten. It's wormy. It ain't no good. The rats crawl all over you at night. I'm sure when you're laying in bed at night, when, or if you're laying on a concrete floor, whatever you're laying on, and they're crawling all over the top of you, I'm sure it torments you in your mind. I'm sure those things that's going on in your mind, they wear you and they beat at you all night long. But if you got a chance to write a letter, what would you say? And the reason that I just read to you what I did, because that was the Apostle Paul. He was laying in a prison because he had done nothing wrong. He was laying in a prison where I'm sure he wasn't getting a bunch of food. I'm sure they wasn't giving him the best attention that everybody else was getting. You see, I read this and I got to thinking about my own life. And I got, to be, I got to thinking about what I would say or what my mind would go through. I thought the first person, if I got a chance to write a letter to my little wife, I'd say, honey, you got to let them know I didn't do this. Whatever they're blaming me of, I didn't do it. Whatever they're telling you that I've done wrong, I didn't do it. 
It's not right. You're going to have to fight for me. You're going to have to go up the bat for me. You're going to have to tell him, hey, he ain't getting no food. Hey, he's wrote me a letter and he's saying that it's dirty in there. He ain't getting nothing to eat. He ain't got no nourishment. That's exactly what I'd want to tell her. If I wrote a letter to my mama, I'd say, mama, I love you. And I want you to understand that I didn't mean to let you down. What they've told you that I've done, it's the same thing I'm telling my wife. I didn't do nothing wrong. But in chapter 1, verse 8, Paul says something real different. Paul writes a letter. Paul writes a letter to the church there at Philippi and he says, For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. He says, God's my record. I can't lie to you. I'm telling you the truth. As bad as this place is, as bad as everything I've been through, I long after being with the Christians. I long after being with people who love Jesus. I long after being with people who want to share the gospel. He says this, I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment. He says, I wish that you just, I wish you'd understand. The more, that, the more knowledge you get, the more love that you get in your heart, the more that you see how, how wrong you was, the more that you see how wrong your life was, the more that you see in all the judgment and everything you've done wrong, that God loves you. He says, the more that you see, the more knowledge you get, the more love you get, I want you to understand where it comes from. It come from a man named Jesus. Amen. It come from a man named Jesus. Verse 10, he says, That ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere without offense until the day of Christ. He says, I want you to be sincere towards people. I don't want people saying that there's a fault in these folks. Because these are good people. I want you to be sincere towards people. I want you to go out of your way to speak to those who feel like they're about right here. I want you to go out of your way and be good to people. Because that's what Jesus done. I want you to go out of your way and break those barriers that everybody else has put in place. I want you to be good to those folks. He says, I want you to be filled with the fruits of righteousness. You see, we wouldn't know what righteousness was if it wasn't for God. We wouldn't know what it was. We wouldn't know what it was like to be right. We wouldn't know what it was like to feel the presence of God if it wasn't for Him. Paul said, I want you to be like this. But he says something here in verse 12. He says, I would that you should understand, brethren, that everything that's went on in my life, everything that's went on, everything that they've done me wrong, everything where they've done me bad, every, every time they've put me in prison, because he was in prison multiple times, every time they've put me in prison and I didn't do nothing wrong, it's going to be all right. He said, because I'm furthering this gospel. I'm going to keep pushing this gospel out. I'm going to keep telling just how good Jesus is. I'm going to keep telling just how good God's been. I'm going to keep telling just the life of sin He pulled me out of. How I don't have to, to stay bound. I don't have to stay in that policy that I was living in. I don't have to go back to the things I was living in. Because He's been good to me. But He says something different here. He says, going back to 12, He said, all this has happened. All this is just water under the bridge just to further this gospel. He said, 13, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. I was sitting down on the couch the other night and I was reading my Bible. I've got to where I like to sit down in the evenings. I like to sit down when Taylor's are cooking dinner. Or when she's doing her little nightly routine or whatever, I like to sit down on the couch and I like to read. 
I read that there. It said, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And I started to cry. And I started to think about my life. The Lord started to convict me. And I got up and I wrote this title down for this message. And I didn't even know where I was going to go with it. I had about three different messages that the Lord was dealing with me with. This one I couldn't get, I couldn't get away from. The Lord kept putting it on my heart. And I read that and He said, So that my bonds in Christ are made manifest in all the past. And I thought, Lord, what do my bonds look like? What does my bonds look like? What do I look like every single day? What do people see when they see me? Do they see Jesus? Or do they see a version of Avery that was what I used to be? Do I look like I'm bonded to Jesus? Do I look like that I'm one with Jesus? Do I look like I'm striving every day to be like Jesus? I got to read and I kept, I kept on reading on that. And I thought, what does my bond look like? And I thought, well, what is a bond? A bond is to join or to be joined securely to something else. Especially by the means of an adhesive substance, by heat or pressure. And I thought about that night that God come into my heart. I thought about thinking I was this close. I thought about that heat. I thought about feeling. I thought I was that close that I could feel. That I could feel hell on my toes. That I was sinking that far. I thought about the pressure. And him saying, come on. Come on. Let me grab hold of you. Let me show you what, let me show you what better life is. Let me show you what your life don't have to be. Let me show you how much better it can be. And he said, let me show you what this blood will do. He said, let me give you a little taste of this blood. Let me pour it on you. Let me pour this blood all over you. Let me bond it to you. Let me, let me turn you into something you don't know about. Let me turn you into something that you ain't never experienced. And I kept reading this and I thought, Lord, what do my bonds look like? Do I go every day and do I look like a Christian? Do I act like a Christian every single day? Do I look like a Christian when I go to the workplace? You see, there's a lost and dying world around us. That they're looking for something else. They're looking for something better. I thought about how many times I go to the workplace in the mornings. And maybe I'm aggravated over something. And I sure don't go in with a smile on my face. I sure don't go in happy to be there. I sure don't go in there joyous and acting like Jesus has saved my life. I sure don't go in acting like a Christian. I sure don't go in acting like that He's put shoes on my feet. That He's put clothes on my back. That I just climbed out of a bed that I was warm in. That He put a roof over my head. Sometimes I don't always act like that. But I should. I began to cry and cry and I kept on and it wouldn't quit. I thought, Lord, what do my bonds look like? Do I look like I'm bonded to you? Or do I look like these other weights of this world holding me down? Do I look like these other weights of this world holding me down? Do I look like I want to be more Christ-like? Or do I look like I want to be like me? You see, we went to work the other day. It was on Sunday. Last Sunday, Christmas. And I got to work and we was all upset. We was aggravated because we had to work on Christmas. It wasn't so much that it was just Christmas. I wanted to be here at church. I wanted to be here. And I was upset. And one of the boys said, I'm not going in. I ain't going. I ain't showing up. He said, I hate it for him. Somebody else can go. We were going to another office. We were going to another location to pick up some slack where some other boys hadn't done their job. I thought, how is it right for me to have to go pick up some slack if these other boys couldn't do their work? How is it right for me? And as much as I wanted to get mad and get upset, I told that boy, I said, this gospel says that I got to be 
of a good report. I got to have a good report. I got to live right. I got to be different. I got to show people that there's something else worth living for. I got to show people that there's a reason why that I got joy in my heart. I got to show people not that I just want to be a Christian, but I'm going to live like it. That I'm going to start living like a Christian. That I'm going to say, no, you know what? There was a father in heaven that sent his son. And he didn't have to go do. It didn't make no sense for him to go do something that he didn't have to. It didn't make no sense for me to have to go to work and pick up him other boys slack. But you see, Jesus had a job to do. And Jesus come here and he died for me and you. He died for every one of our sins. He died for every one of us. I continued to think on that. I thought, God, what do my bonds look like? Do I look like a Christian every day? Or do I look a little weak? You see, me and Tanner and Gavin was sitting up here on the front pew one night, or one sunny morning. And Gavin had a slick looking old pair of shoes on. I'm going to tell you, he did. It was nice. He had a navy, uh, I don't even know what suit on. He had like an old navy suit on. He slicked up, Tanner said he was. And he had these old brown shoes on. I thought, man, them shoes look good. I said, Gavin, you look sharp. You look nice. And we kept sitting there. We kept sitting there before church started. And Tanner said, son, what's wrong with your shoe? And Gavin had his foot propped up. And the whole end of his shoe on here on the sole was just appealing. It was a hanging off. It was hanging off the back. And the Lord gave me this thought when I was studying for this message. He said, sometimes my bonds, sometimes my bonds get a little weak. And I was thinking about that old pair of shoes you had. I thought sometimes my bond gets a little weak. Sometimes it gives up. Sometimes it don't hold like it used to. Sometimes it don't hold up like it was meant to hold. You know why sometimes it gives up? You know why sometimes it don't hold up like it's supposed to? That's because something got in between. Something got in between them two mating services. You see, the Father's perfect. The Father's perfect. If He's here and I don't feel Him, it's because I'm here. If I don't feel Him, it ain't because that I'm right beside Him and I just don't feel Him. It's because I've moved away. Sometimes i got to get that old cleaning kid out. Like old Gavin's shoe. And I thought, sometimes I would just peel that old thing back. And I would scrape the dirt out of it. Where it's been walked on. Where it's been used. I got to scrape the dirt out of it. I got to clean it back up. So I got to take them alcohol wipes and I got to wipe that thing down. And I got to get the nasty off of it. You see, sometimes I got to do the same thing in this Christian walk. I got to say, Jesus, clean me up just a little bit. Lord, get them old cleaning wipes out and make me clean again. Bob me up as close as you can because I can't do nothing without you. I can't do nothing without him. I began to think about a time when I was in middle school. And I wrestled on a, on a wrestling team. And we was at the practice and we was towards the end of a practice one day. And there's a boy said, he said, now tell me what you're going to do. He said, if you go out to wrestle a boy and when, you, when you're walking up to the mat, you see he's got a little bit of a limp on one side. He said, you see one of his legs has hurt a little bit. You see he don't walk quite as good as he used to. He said, what are you going to do? We all sit there a minute. Somebody said, I'm shooting in and I'm taking out that leg as fast as I can. I'm taking out that bad leg as fast as I can because I know it's going to cut him deep. I know it's going to hurt. Another boy said, no. I'd go in and I'd sweep out that good leg so he's got to hobble on that bad leg. And I'd be truthful, I never did hear the right answer to that. They sat and talked about it and talked about it. But the Lord brought it back to my attention the other night when I was studying for this. If my bond don't look strong, if my bond don't look good, if it don't look like I'm linked up with Jesus, it gives somebody else a spot to push. 
It gives somebody else a focal point to say, there's his weak spot. That's what gets him. That's the weak spot right there. You see, this world and the devil, they're plotting on you. He wants you to do bad. He wants you to quit serving the Lord. You see, I don't want to give the world any reason whatsoever. I don't want to give them any reason whatsoever to find no bad in me. I want to look like a Christian. I want my bond to be tight. I want to be bonded up to Him the best that I can. I want to work as hard as I can. He was talking this morning. And he said, he said I've, we always make New Year's resolutions. I want to make that same resolution, brother. I want to be as close to Him as I possibly can be. I don't want to give the world one ounce of doubt. You see, when we go to work each and every day, and we're in the mully grubs, and we're complaining about things that's went on at home, you not think them people look at us and think, well, if he's a Christian... And he believes that the Lord is so good. Why is he complaining all the time? Why do you get on Facebook and why do you complain about your situation all the time? Why do you complain about everything that's going on in your life if God's got it? If God's handling it, why are you so worried about it? I don't want to give them an ounce. I don't, give, I don't want to give them one ounce to think that there's anything wrong with me. I ain't telling you to lie. I'm telling you to be like Paul. Paul said everything I've went through is for the furtherance of this gospel. I don't care what I go through. I want it to be for the furtherance of this gospel. Because if you save tonight, God's been good to you. If He's given you a chance to not have to die and go to hell, He's been good to you. In the worst of your times, God's been good to you. I began to think about this. I thought, why is my bond so important? What makes my bond so important? I began to think about those working around me that maybe don't know Christ. That maybe don't know who He is. Maybe they ain't tasted and seen just how good that He is. Maybe they don't understand how He can change your life. Levi, I remember when you got up and you testified how the Lord changed your life. I had done something for me. Because I seen what he could do. Joey, the testimony you give this morning, you seen him change your life. You seen him work in your life. I had done something for me. You see, I was talking the other day in the truck with Tyler Manick. Some of y'all know Tyler, some of you don't. I'm going to give you a little background information. Tyler and his wife was pregnant with their first youngin. And Tyler. Uh, was, was diagnosed with leukemia. <clears throat> if he hadn't have caught it when he did, the doctor said he would have died. They told him, they said, they said, your wife will make it through this young. But don't plan on ever having another. Because after you go through this chemo, it's going to wipe out everything in your life. He said, told them doctors, said, if God will bring me through this, and God sees fit for me to have another one, He'll give me another. He said, I'm going to keep... Tyler's saying, I'm going to keep my bonds up tight. I'm going to keep praying to the God that saved me. I'm going to keep praying to the God that brought me out of the life that I was living. I'm going to keep praying to the God that put a daddy in his home to show him to love the Lord. He said, I'm going to keep praying to the God that's always been there for my grandmother. I'm going to keep praying to the God that's always been good. When I was bad, He was always good. He said He'd come home one day and his wife, Chelsea, she said, she said, I, we're going to leave Samara, their daughter. So we're going to leave her standing on the porch just a second. She said, I bought her a new book. And it's sitting out here in the car, and I want to show it to you. She said, I want to show you this book. I want to show you this book I bought for her, and we're going to give it to her. But I want you to see it first. He said, all right. 
He said, my daughter's standing on the porch. And he said, I walked out to the car. She opened the back door of that car up. And he said, I looked at that book. And it said, I'm a big sister now. It said, I'm a big sister now. Tyler said, I went to jumping and praising the Lord. He said, I went to doing laps around that house. He said, I went to praising the Father because He's been good to me. When they told me it couldn't happen, I said, I'm going to keep trusting in God. When they told him there wasn't no way, he said, I'm going to keep trusting in God. He said, I'm running, doing laps around the house. And he said, Samara, come a hollering off of that porch. She said, Daddy, I want to do it too. <laughs> she said, I want to do it too. She said, put me on your shoulders. You see, verse 14, chapter 1 and verse 14, Paul says, Many of the brethren in the Lord are waxing confident by my bonds. You see, I've heard the things that God's done. I've heard how good He's been. And I want to see, I want to see everybody talking about the good things that God's done in their lives. Because it makes me a little more confident. It makes me a little more excited to say, my God's going to bring me through it. When she, when she said, Daddy, I want to do it too. I've heard your testimony, Stephen. And I want to jump up and shout too. Because I said, I want to do it too. I got excited when he told me that. He said, the young and said, I want to do it too. I was just sitting over here in a corner about two weeks ago when we had that Christmas play. And I was adoring the lights for these youngins up here. And nobody knowed it but me. These youngins are standing up here praising the Lord. And these youngins are standing up here singing. I said, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who He is. You see, that's why my bonds are important. That's why it's important that I look good. That's why it's important that I live a Christian life in my household. That's why it's important that I live a Christian life in front of your children. Because they're watching every single thing that we do. That's why it's important that we tell these, we show these youngins just how much Jesus loves them. That's why it's important that we keep these youngins in church. Wow. <laughs> so that they can look back one day. They can say mom and daddy had a bond. Yeah. Mom and daddy had a bond with Jesus. When things got tough in my house, mom and daddy prayed to Jesus. Mom and daddy didn't argue in front of the youngins. Because they want to look like Christians. Mom and daddy went out of their way to speak to others of different races so that they could break these barriers that our government wants to put on us. Mom and daddy went out of their way to be nice to people because that's what Christians do. Mom and daddy went out of their way to act like Christians every single day because so that they could further the gospel. Mom and daddy went out of their way to be good to folks because that's what Jesus done. You see, your bonds are just as important to your Christian life as they are to somebody else's. I got up the other morning and I was, I was reading, I was studying, and I began to cry. I began to agonize with the Lord and I said, Lord, Why can't I get in your word? Why can't I remember scripture off the top of my head like other preachers do? Why can't I understand things the way that other preachers do? Why can't I get in your word and understand? I feel like there's much, it's, it's, it's a little more deeper. I feel, Lord, it's a little deeper. And sometimes I just can't grasp it all. He said, son, do you remember when you was in about the third or fourth grade and you couldn't read a lick? And that teacher said it's going to hold you back because you wasn't ready to go to the next grade because you couldn't read. Do you remember when your mama had a bond with Jesus? 
And your mama said, we're going to get you up here in this altar and we're going to anoint you. That the Lord will learn you up and teach you how to read. Do you remember when your mama and your daddy set you in front of Shula and Carrie? And he said, you remember when them ladies prayed for you? Do you remember every time that your little grannies prayed for you? Do you remember every time? Do you remember every prayer that she said for you? Don't use what you think is against you. I'm working it all out. He said, I'm working it all out. You see, I'm going to keep my bond tight. I'm going to keep my bond tight so that everybody around me can see Christ. So that my wife can see Christ. So that my brothers and my sisters can see Christ. So that my church can see Christ. But so that those that's lost can see Christ. They say, I want that joy that He's got. I want that joy that when it don't make sense, for some reason, He's got something different. For some reason, He's got a little more joy than I got. I can't make no sense out of why He's so happy and that boy's in a prison in his own mind. That's because God's been good. Diane, come to the piano. Everybody would stand, every head bowed, never eye closed. <coughs> Is there anybody here tonight that say, Preacher, you preaching to me. I want my bonds just a little tighter. I want to go to work every day and look a little more like Jesus. I want to go to work every day and not complain. But I want to thank God because He's been good to me. I want to show others that God's been good to me. I want to show others that there's a life worth living outside of being tied up in sin. Outside of being tied up in bondage. I want to live like Jesus has been good to me. I want to live like the Father's blessed me. You see, I want to live more and more each day like the Father's been good to me. I couldn't thank Him enough because He has been better than good in my life. I was praying the other night. And I don't ever want to get complacent to thank the Lord for the little things. If He's given you a roof over your head, He's been good. If He's given you a spouse, you might argue, but you ain't left yet. It must be awful good. You ain't run out on them yet. It must be awful good. It's time we quit complaining and we start living like God's been good to us. It's time we start living like that we got a bond with Jesus. Paul said, Paul said, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, and in persecutions, in distress. He said, but I do it for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I don't ever want to go to work another day and act like God ain't been good to me. I don't ever want to go to work another day and act like God's not blessed me. Because He has been good to me. I love Him tonight. I appreciate the Lord.
I appreciate Him helping me. I appreciate y'all allowing me to preach to you tonight. I don't want to ever say anything that's out of the way. I just want to be a help to somebody. Because it helped me. And I know it ain't just good for me. It's good for all of us. This gospel's good for every one of us. Sometimes it cuts on me. But sometimes, see, y'all just got 30 minutes of it. I've lived with this for the past five days. I've cared. I told my wife, I said, I've woke up every night in the middle of the night and I've been preaching this message. Stephen knows what I'm talking about. I've woke up every morning preaching this message. I've woke up every morning asking myself, God, how can I make my bond just a little bit stronger? What can I do to be just a little bit closer to You and less of me? I'm finished tonight. I love you and I appreciate you. Amen. Enjoyed that message, didn't you? Not trying to add nothing to that, but I want to tell you something, a story right quick. That made me think of when I was about 19, 20 years old. My daddy had a pair of snake skin boots. Man, it was the coolest things I'd ever seen. I couldn't afford a pair. Well, Dad pretty much wore them out. He's going to throw them away. I was like, Dad, don't throw them boots away. Let me have them. He said, son, they're about wore out. And I'm like, Dad, them are the coolest boots I've ever seen. I said, just let me have them. Well, Dad, give me them boots. David, I wore them everywhere I went. Man, I wore them everywhere. And the soul started coming off of them. Well, man, I tried to glue it back on. But me being how I was, I'd throw the glue to it and it wouldn't last but a day or two. Because I wasn't getting in there and cleaning it right. And it wouldn't stay. But you know what? I kept wearing them anyway. My wife remembered this. We'd have been married long. I have duct tape on it. I ain't lying to you. Remember that old movie, Harley Davis and the Marlboro Man? I have duct tape on the boot. Now, Jamie Evans didn't do that. But I did. I loved them boots. People said, what world would you get you some new boots? I said, I love these boots. They fit my feet just right. That's so I like the way they look. He said, won't you fix them? I said, I've tried to fix them. I said, I've tried to glue them back. I said, I got cardboard in the bottom of them now because I got holes in the bottom of my feet get wet. And I said, I got this duct tape on here. And I said, it'll last me about a, two or three days and duct tape wires off and I put new duct tape on. <coughs> I didn't know how to fix them. But you know, one day I run into this man. Oh. <laughs> and he asked me about my boots. He said, son, you like them old boots? I said, yeah, them was my daddy's. He gave them to me. I said, souls won't stay on them. I've tried to fix them. I've tried to glue them. He taped them. I said, it don't work. He said, well, let me tell you about a man that can fix them. Right. Yeah. yeah. He said, let me tell you about a man who knows what he's doing. Yeah. Right. He said, over there behind J&S Cafeteria, he said, there's a little old cobbler shop over there. He said, there ain't many of them around. They ain't real popular no more. He said, but there's a little old man back there. He said, if you can get to him, and get him to take your boots, he'll fix them. I carried them boots over our Stephen. Dropped them off. He said, boy, you've got the good out of these, ain't you? I said, no, sir, I'm hoping not. I said, you reckon you can fix them? He picked them up. He said, you about waited too late. He said, you about waited too late. He said, but there's just enough left on here. He said, I can put them back together. Thank God that was my life one day, Dale. Yeah, I was wore out. I tried to fix it myself. Tried to patch myself up. Couldn't figure out how to get it right. Then one day somebody told me about a man named Jesus. He said, you about ruined yourself. He said, but there's just enough left. Amen. Thank God he didn't throw me away. That old cobbler fixed them boots and I picked them up. They still looked old on the top. Boy, turn them over. Them bottoms look brand new, Mike. That's how Jesus works, ain't it? This old man may still look the same, but boy, if you could just see what God done in here. 
Amen. He'll make a difference. Thank God. I enjoyed that message, Avery. It was good. It helped me. Ain't you glad you met Jesus one day? Ain't you glad there's just enough left that Jesus said, I can work with this? Mark, if I'd have waited a little bit longer, it'd have been too late. That's why we emphasize so hard when Jesus goes a calling on your heart, you got to come right then while there's still time. Amen. I love the Lord tonight. I appreciate that message. Anybody got anything on your heart tonight? Anything? All right, be praying for one another this week. Be back Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, expecting a blessing, praying for one another. I love you. Chris, would you dismiss us in prayer, brother?